difficulties here um, at HUD, and so we are going to do the rest of this interview via flip cam, because that's our backup plan, and then we'll just upload this video and hopefully get back to live streaming later in the day today. Um, if you missed the earlier portion of the live stream when we got started, um, we are here as part of a meeting that the Case Foundation and the White House are doing um, to talk about how we can promote innovation through open grant making, prizes, and challenges. And so throughout the day, we'll be talking to various experts and leaders in this field who have already been experimenting with these things. Um, we've started today with a couple of people who are working on one of the most well-known and one of the largest um, open grant making competitions to date. We have Bon and Bo, who is the global social media director um, of PepsiCo, and Matt Shore, who's a co-founder of Good Inc. So we were just chatting about um, what the Pepsi Refresh competition is. Um, we feel like probably everyone knows, but had um, Bon and just give a brief summary of what it is, just in case um, you haven't heard of it, and then um, we'll get going through the rest of our questions. Yeah. I'm going to try to do it exactly <laughs> like we did the first time we did on this. There was a joke about being under a rock. <laughs> exactly. If you drink Pepsi, it's okay. You can live under rocks. Um, so really quickly, the, um, the Pepsi Refresh Project is um, we're giving away $20 million to um, ideas, big and small, that move uh, the world forward and move, and, and move communities forward. And basically what we've asked is we asked for you to submit ideas, you to campaign for those ideas, and for the public uh, to vote on it. Uh, each month we're giving away 32 grants. Uh, you're allowed to submit ideas in six different categories, uh, and those are everything from health and wellness to education, uh, and then there's varying grant levels, so 5,000, uh, 50,000, 250,000, and there's uh, levels uh, up in between there. But really the goal of it is, is in 2009 we asked you to talk about things that refresh your world, and in 2010 we really wanted to transform the brand into a brand that could help bring people's passions to life um, so that we were really walking the walk. Uh, and so what we've pledged is you know, our resources uh, to bring about the ideas that you believe in that are going to change the world. And it's less about just organizations and more about the power of individual ideas and in the individual to make change uh, with inside uh, their community. And, uh, I've handed over last time to Max too, which I will, but to talk uh, about you know, what we've tried to do um, is bring together some of the brightest minds in the space as part of A, our advisory board, but B, we've created an ambas six, six ambassadors, an ambassador group, one for each of the categories that you can submit ideas in, and the real goal of that was not only did we want to just have people win and we grant money, but we wanted to make sure that that money was going to deliver real impact inside the community. So the goal of each of these ambassadors, which are uh, managed by Good, is to work with all the winners to make sure that they bring those ideas to life so that there's real impact with inside the community. So that's the refresh project. That's well said. <laughs> and Max was just going to talk for a second about what Good's role is in supporting the, the projects. So Good's a platform for people, businesses, and nonprofits who want to do well and do good. And since we launched about three and a half years ago, we wanted to partner with businesses to really, you know, work with their marketing dollars to make things better. And I think Pepsi really has a vision here and is going bolder and bigger than any other company that I know of. And uh, it's just been really, really exciting to work on this project. Um, and, you know, from, from helping design the project to now that every month there are 32 winners, we're on the back end uh, working with them, creating a custom plan of support. You know, there's a single mother in Texas who wanted to bring there's a 14-year-old kid in Chicago who won a grant, and Teach for America won a grant. So, you know, for each winner, there's a, a, a sort of a varied level of support that they need, but we're there to kind of fill in the cracks. Um, we're also creating content around this space, and that's that's re really where we, you know, grew up from. And it's been fun to kind of work with Pepsi to, to have it be fun, but also impactful. And really, you know, this whole project's about turning ideas into action, and that's what could be better than that. Yeah. And one of the things which we said earlier too, was <laughs> what I love about what Good's role is, is that not only are they helping to ensure implementation and you know providing support, but they're also documenting these projects as well as providing support for non-winners mm -hmm. uh, who have who have had great ideas, mm -hmm. who have been a part of it. But you know, documenting this so it serves as roadmaps for other people like the kid in Chicago who want to bring green 
shields mm -hmm. uh, to their school buses, mm -hmm. uh, showing how those projects are actually being brought to life, uh, milestone after milestone. And we think right now there's, a, there's just a time in our society where more and more people want to get engaged. There's kind of a cultural shift that's happening, but there's not a whole lot of money for the just the average person who has an idea. And this program's available to anyone who has an idea to make their community better. And that's really novel, and I think the program's also been designed so that good ideas rise to the top, and then no matter who wins, they'll get support to make it, make it real. But well, what's interesting about what you said is because a lot of people ask, well, why? You know, why? Why did we decide to do this? At first, Pepsi has a heritage of uh, being at the center of culture and always skating into culture, and that's where we as a brand have always lived, and that could be Michael Jackson or Britney Spears, um, or wherever the cultural zeitgeist is at the moment. And actually, two years ago, we did an optimism survey, and one of the things that came out of that survey was you know, people's belief in the ability of them and the individual to make change in their community. And so, that, I believe, to what you're saying, is kind of the cultural zeitgeist of the moment now. Um, and, and I think will be for quite a long time. And Pepsi, you know, being the kind of DNA of being a, a part of culture and really supporting cultural change is said, well, here, let us be a platform to help make that happen. So. Choice of a new generation. Exactly. <laughs> of every generation. <laughs> but, yeah. but yes. One thing I wanted to um, ask, I, we got a couple of emails regarding this question, and it's something that I hear a lot when people are talking about these open voting competitions. How do you make sure, and I, I do think that a lot of really cool projects have gotten grants from Pepsi so far, but how do you make sure that it's not just a popularity contest, that the people with the biggest networks, whether their idea is crazy or the best idea ever, end up winning? I'll take this from a couple of ways. You know, on the one hand, we wanted to create something that was totally transparent, totally fair, <coughs> and democratic. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's nice to have objective standards to determine who gets the funds. Um, on the other hand, the program set out to you know allow thousands of people to kind of just deploy what their idea is, put it down on paper, type it into the computer for the first time, and that in and of itself is a huge impact. Bill Drayton, the founder of Ashoka, talks about trying to make everyone a change maker. And I think this program is really prompting people to do that every month when their submissions. Um, on top of that, you know, it's a real, it's, it's kind of a hardcore learning lesson in, in how do you use social media, how do you build community. So there are organizations that had no community, they built their community to win. And that's a really useful skill for anybody in this right. day and age. And then finally, no matter who wins, they're getting hands on support to implement their project. So from start to finish, it's more than just the popularity contest. And, and you know, the other thing I think uh, a lot of it is there's, there was a lot of thinking that went into the design as well. Because mm -hmm. you're right, there are organizations that have very big networks, uh, mm -hmm. which is why there's varying levels of, right. of grants. But you know what's amazing is that, of course, we're all nervous when we launch our you know, project mm -hmm. this big. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we saw was that it was such an even cascade mm -hmm. of those organizations that you might they kept big networks as well as individuals. And then when we looked at the winning pool, it was the same even cascade. And I mean, even, and what's also great, I think, from a, as a PepsiCo employee, is that we've opened it up to PepsiCo employees. Mm -hmm. And so I get an email every single day, you know, from uh, Denise Jolie, uh, um, which is prompting, you know, her network of people to vote. And this idea, driven by her, mm -hmm. has been, you know, in, Bearing between six and seven, you know, in the fifty thousand dollar range mm -hmm. for you know for the entire time. So it really, it, it's really about who has the conviction. And what's great about that is that we know the people who have the conviction to win are going to be the people who have the conviction to actually make it uh, happen. So exactly. Yeah. So in that design, you yeah. have you, you don't have with other programs like this. You had kind of a million dollar prize, and the people who come in second and third get twenty five thousand dollars or something like that. Even though they didn't necessarily specify what the idea was that they mm -hmm. needed and the lesser amount might not help their, their project. Here we have everyone kind of saying, I need $5,000 to get this done. I need $250,000 to get this done. And they're competing against similar Scott size organizations. So I think that, that that's really been fun to watch that unfold. Cool. Um, one other question I had probably for you, Bonin, is you know, putting together a, a competition like this or opening um, grant making up for people to decide, you kind of lose a lot of control and I think it's a scary thing for um, a lot of brands and probably a scary thing for the federal government to think about doing as well as they're, they're talking about today. Um, so 
what's been your experience with, you know, has there been backlash, mistakes? How are you handling some of the issues that might come up in this type of... Surprisingly issue-free, as crazy as this sounds. But, you know, let me just step back. I think in terms of control, what's amazing for a brand like us, what we understand in the, when the program was being structured is we understand that if we are aligned with people's passions and our attributes support passions of, mm -hmm. of individuals, which is what has always driven our business, right? And so we measure brand health. And bre that brand health is how closely aligned are our attributes with the attributes of our consumers. And then the other major piece is relevance. How relevant are we in the continual conversation of the world, right? So those two big buckets are what? So what, well, it's given up control. It's mm -hmm. actually provided us closer alignment with our consumer's passion. So what we hear, so before, if you just look at the Facebook page, we heard, I love Pepsi, I love drinking Pepsi, I love, you know, which is great, we'll take that all day long, <laughs> all day long, no, no, don't hesitate to write that. But after the program launched, what we saw was, wow, I love Pepsi because they're allowing me to bring my passion to life. Mm -hmm. Like that is the kind of closeness and consumer engagement, and that's why when we talk about this program, it's really a consumer engagement program, uh, social engagement, consumer engagement, that kind of engagement is something that you know, we will pay endless amounts of, you know, it, that's a huge opportunity for us to connect with our consumers in a big way. So while we're giving up control, we're actually gaining engagement. And so I, I think that that's the equation. In terms of mistakes, it's a, again, it's a very complex, I, I mean, it's outrageously complex, just making sure that everything, even right. from just delivering the grant money, uh, every single piece. So there has been, um, you know, technical mistakes, there's been people who are trying to beat the ski in the system, so there's been all of that, and what we've tried to do in every single situation is just be very open and transparent um, around what the, uh, 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 been open and transparent around what the issues have been, how we're fixing those issues, and then, you know, what, we, what we're gonna do uh, moving forward. And so, yeah. I, and I think that we've gotten a lot of credit for that, and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I think a lot of people in the sector have given credit to Pepsi for being really transparent about handling issues and, and owning up to things when mistakes happen and then taking care of them and, and talking everyone through that process. I think this leads to, since we're here today, talking with the federal government, do you guys have any advice? I think being open and transparent is probably one piece of advice, but do you have any other advice for um, federal agencies as they're putting together these types of competitions from what you've learned so far, is there anything you would tell them? Um, I mean, man, there's so much. Of <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need to have work. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, no I, I, it's actually the most exciting thing, I think. Uh, be prepared for um, a lot of late nights. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that's the first and foremost. Be prepared for stuff that you never envisioned. So for example, we do customer relations all the time. Like that's what, here we had a submission process and an application which required us to do technical customer relations, which our customer relations people never thought would ever happen or had never gone through. So, all, and we, were, we had to be flexible enough to get our tech people on, the customer relations people on, the person who was having a problem with submission, have open calls, I mean, you know, so there were a lot of those, being able to be, have a flexible enough um, in, you know, process. The other thing I would say is, don't try to do it as a small little thing. So I think what was interesting with the with, with us is that because it's the only thing we are operating against as an organization, everybody from senior management all the way down um, is is laser focused on making sure this is a success. Which means that you have the whole organization apart trying to make sure that we're dealing dealing with all the pieces. So I think that that mean, I think if it was a small project off to the side, it wouldn't be as successful because of how many moving pieces um, uh, it requires. And then I would say don't underestimate the ability of the people who are participating in it to help problem solve. I mean, so we would go out to the community and ask questions and what could be better. I think, and I think that just points to surrounding yourself with really smart folks. I mean, our advisory board, our ambassadors, everybody. And, and I think be flexible in the design so that it can, it can move. That's what we're learning. Totally. And to that I just add, you know, I think you touched on this, but have respect for the people you're designing it for. Mm -hmm. Be clear, be fair, be transparent. And, and then I think the feedback loop is so important. You know, if you're going to ask people to participate, show them what happens as a result. And I think, you know, 
I'm really excited about the conversation going on in the other room because it's exciting what, what can happen with these competitions. And speaking of participation, we were talking before we got started about how incredible the, the participation has been and how many people have gotten involved if they don't have their own project in actually voting for other people's projects. And I think you were going to share a, a little update on that. Can no, go ahead, you. <laughs> so now yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, the program's hit uh, 10 million votes now, which is a huge which achievement, well ahead of where we projected. In the first couple of months, there were over a billion earned media impressions, which was also just a huge achievement. So the program is not only creating tons of awareness, but um, the impact is starting to happen on the ground as well. Yeah, it's great. But that's the funny thing is that <laughs> we were, in the very beginning, um, there was, first of all, there was so much outpour uh, in the very beginning, and people would talk and say, wow, the program's going so great. I'm like, well, we don't even have winners yet. Like, we haven't even seen impact. And now, once we're seeing impact, and I, I think that people underestimate for a brand like us, uh, and I think in general, the power of that five block radius and the power of people in their local communities to inspire mm -hmm. the, uh, the folks around them. And that's what's so great about this, is that every single, all 32 of those grant winners and 200 overall across the whole program per month are local heroes that are inspiring people in their community. And, and to me, that's exciting. And I give an example. When we first announced the program, you, I think you were, you were there, definitely, and at, at Pepsi, uh, we had a town hall. And what we did was we originally tested the design on our uh, employee resource groups, so like our diversity groups, that's what employee resource are. And so there were three groups, finally, that were in the finals that were running for the $10,000 grant. Um, group that won, we announced it, and the room burst out clapping, and then they burst out in tears. And people were hugging each other. I mean, like, as an employee of PepsiCo, to see how excited people were to realize that what we were about to embark on was, going, you know, was actually going to be really transformational, and they were crying. I mean, to me, that's a, it was a huge, as an employee, I was hugely moved. And so I think that that's eventually what you see. Anyway. Sorry. Totally, and the, and the and the and the <coughs> how hard the people involved in this program are working, I think, is a testament to kind of just the benefit of creating meaning in your work and the outcomes of your work. Um, I think what's so fun is you know I've been so lucky since starting good to you know meet the Kivas of the world when it's still just an idea, um, you know get to you know sit down with Bill Drayton who, who coined the term social entrepreneurship, and now you know walking into a company like Pepsi, you're seeing innovation on that level. You know, here in D.C. today, you're seeing kind of experiments um, of innovation on that level. So it's just an exciting time for these types of programs. And, you know, with, with better results, hopefully there'll be more investment in this space. And, and Ami, who's the brand manager, yes. who unfortunately <laughs> doesn't, you know, she's dealing with a massive brand. Yes. But, uh, she has been just the biggest inspiration mm -hmm. in the world in terms of bringing this program to life and bringing the team to life. I mean, mm -hmm. she's and I think what's so exciting too, I think a lot of what's happening from, from DC and in the foundation world is geared around kind of nonprofit social innovation, and that's really exciting. But there's this whole other avenue of business social innovation. And there's a lot of you know sort of resources behind that, and there are a lot of people who, who that's their job. And I think the more, you know, there was an article about Pepsi rewriting the rules of marketing. And I think the more these new rules are kind of set in stone and and, 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 and can show real business results, we're going to see more companies kind of following suit. Mm -hmm. We're going to see more efforts like this, and it's super exciting. Well, great. I think because of all of our technical difficulties, we're now out of time. So it's a little shorter than we anticipated, and we're going to have to get to these questions another time. Um, but thank those you so hard, much. Those are, those are the hardest questions people have. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for being here, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back. Um, in about 20 minutes at 12 o'clock with uh, Peter Diamandis, who is the uh, chairman and CEO of the X Prize, and Tom Khalil from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. So they should have some interesting things um, to share from both the public and the private sector side um, about how these prizes can work.